I love business aviation. And it's not about symbolism of luxury and wealth, but about the achievements in engineering. Business jets are born in the conditions of the most severe competition, the race of designs, performance and technologies. Thanks to this, we sometimes see results that cannot be seen anywhere else in civil aviation. Hello Aviators, Sky here, and today we are looking at one of such results. A symbol of not only high status, but also aviation excellence. I present to you the Gulfstream G700. The story of the G700 should start in November of 2009, when its dad, the great and terrible Gulfstream G650, made its maiden flight. A landmark in the company's history. The thing is, for decades Gulfstream has followed the strategy of evolutionary development of its line, when each subsequent model was by and large an improvement on the previous one. But the G650 model became a real revolution, a completely new aircraft created from scratch. Classic Gulfstream features such as a clean wing and huge windows were supplemented with all the best modern achievements, making the aircraft almost perfect. The G650's capabilities have been appreciated, it has become the absolute market leader and an object of desire for people who seem to have it all. More than 600 aircraft have been delivered, despite the fact that their cost is almost at the level of airliners, about 70 million dollars per unit. The wave of innovations generated by the G650 model swept through the Gulfstream line. In 2015 and 2016, the G500 and G600 models took off. Slightly inferior to the G650 in size and range, they advanced even more in technology. They were equipped with new engines, the cockpits were significantly updated, side sticks and touchscreens appeared here for the first time, noise insulation and comfort were noticeably improved. The result? About 300 machines flying around the world. Not bad. But the era of glorious Gulfstream domination did not last long, because the Great White North was not going to give up its positions. In November of 2016, the main competitor of the American flagship took to the skies, the Canadian Bombardier Global 7500. Bombardier also decided to create a new aircraft, implementing the most advanced solutions in it. And they had solutions, because the same guys made the C-Series, the current Airbus A220, one of the most advanced modern airliners. The airframe made of advanced alloys and composites, amazing avionics and the latest engines did their job. The aircraft caught up with its competitor in speed, both flying at Mach 0.925, 529 knots, and surpassed it in range, reaching a record 7700 miles. But its main advantage was in its size. The Global 7500 became the largest business jet in the world. The 52-ton aircraft had a cabin as long as 16.59 meters. It was more than 2 meters longer than the G650. To this were added larger windows, luxurious filling and the best comfort systems. At first glance, all this seems like a collection of small details, but they were enough for the Global 7500 to become the king of the hill, the best long-range business jet in the world, which with a cost of almost 75 million dollars has found serious demand, more than 200 aircraft by 2024. This is a classic race between two leaders fighting for every second and every inch, and an example of progress caused by such a race. At the moment of its birth, the G650 was the most advanced aircraft in its class, but it became obsolete in less than a decade. For the world of aviation, this is no time at all. Gulfstream naturally could not tolerate such overtaking and initiated a new project. This is what laid the foundation of the aircraft known under the name Gulfstream G700. Despite the epic nature of the moment, no one expected a revolution here. I already said that the Global 7500, having received many innovations, surpassed the G650, but surpassed it in a combination of local factors, nothing radical. The G650 platform was created quite recently and has quite a decent potential for upgrades. And so they did. They took all the parameters and began to increase them to a level higher than the competitor. 
The main external change for the aircraft is the result of the struggle for cabin dimensions. Here, Gulfstream initially had a slight advantage. With a width of 2.49 meters and a height of 1.91 meters, the G650 cabin slightly exceeded the global, but was far behind in length. Therefore, the fuselage cross section was not changed, but by adding a couple of sections, the overall length was increased by about 3 meters. This allowed the cabin to be enlarged. While the Global 7500 has 16.59 meters, the G700 has 17.35 meters. How do you like that, Canadians? Other dimensions did not change much. The wing grew a little and received new winglets, and the fin, on the contrary, became a little smaller, along with the overall height. Curiously, they did not break the Global's records for weight. The maximum takeoff weight of the G700 is 48.8 tons. Externally, you can tell the 650 and 700 models apart, as usual, by the number of windows. The 650 has 8 on each side, while the 700 has 10. And all of this went into comfort. Passenger capacity has not changed compared to the G650, the sacred maximum of 19 people. And having at their disposal a cabin, biggest among all business jets, interior designers played out their imagination to the fullest. In the base, everything is as usual. In the front, there's a kitchen and the front lavatory, then there are passenger areas. Standard options, two seats and a table, a conference area with a large table and four seats, a recreation area with a sofa, credenza and a TV, Plus, of course, a grand suite with a bed, another lavatory, and a luggage compartment. One could say, well, okay, everything is as usual, just more space. But the new plane's special feature is much wider customization. For example, the kitchen here can be the usual one, like on all business jets. Or it can be a paradise for the crew. A huge one with a 3 meter countertop, a bunch of storage and equipment, as well as a separate room for rest. There can be four or even five zones in the cabin. The central passenger zones can be swapped and configured in detail. Instead of a usual bed in the suite, you can install a full-size double bed, enlarge the lavatory and install a shower cabin there, and change the filling in the remaining zones. Moreover, not only colors and materials, but also the elements themselves. There are more than a dozen options for seats alone. The Gulfstream's answer to Bombardier's latest air filtration system is a radical step. Filtration and recuperation are minimal, and the air is essentially flow-through. It comes in from outside and is expelled outside. A complete cycle in 2-3 to three minutes. At the same time, cabin pressure has increased. At the altitude of 13 km, the pressure inside corresponds to an altitude of about 860 meters better than any other jet, including the Global 7500 and G650. The interfaces and communication systems have been updated with faster internet, and the lighting system has become more detailed, capable of forming almost any pattern and simulating the change of day and night, a great help in the fight against jet lag. And the noise, one of the lowest in the class and almost everything that flies, at the level of a bedroom in a regular house, and coupled with almost a movie theater audio system, just a dream. The pilot's workplace here is, for the most part, inherited from the G500 and G600 models. This decision is quite logical, because their cockpits are already aviation sci-fi. The latest avionics, synchronized side sticks, head-up displays, synthetic vision, multi-touch… Probably no one makes cooler cockpits today. And for the staff, this is a big plus. It will be quite easy to retrain engineers and pilots from other Gulfstreams to the G700. Finally, one of the Global 7500's biggest advantages of the G650 was the latest General Electric Passport engines. The G700 solves that problem with Rolls-Royce Pearl 700 engines, the latest version of the BR700 family. Developed under the advanced program that preceded the birth of the giant ultrafan, the Pearl 700 is one of the best business aviation engines, quite capable of jostling with the passports. 
The engines deliver up to 81.2 kN of thrust each and also provide optimized maintenance, low noise levels and, most importantly, low fuel consumption. Cruising speed is usual for large models, Mach 0.85 to 0.9, but its maximum speed is Mach 0.935, 990 km per hour, 10 km per hour faster than the Global 7500. Flight range reaches 7,750 miles, by as much as 50 miles more than the Global 7500. Mwahaha! <laughs> just like the Olympic Games. Companies give it their all just to, like, slightly overtake their neighbor. Flight altitudes base 13 km with a practical ceiling of 15,545 meters. There is simply no point in competing here, only the military fly higher. The Gulfstream G700 was announced at the NBAA Business Aviation Convention in Las Vegas in 2019. Moreover, the company immediately threw a trump card on the table. They did not just bring a mock-up with a promise to show something live in the near future, but immediately showed the aircraft standing at the Gulfstream plant airfield in Savannah. A total of six prototypes were assembled, the first of which took off in February 2020. Initially, it was assumed that certification would be completed in 2022, but after the story with the 737 MAX, regulators tightened certification requirements, and then the corona ruined everything. The coveted FAA paper was issued only in the spring of 2024. The first deliveries began with an average cost for an aircraft of about 78 to 80 million dollars. Expensive? Yes, but by the time certification was completed, the G700 portfolio was already at 46 units. Actually, the race between the G700 and the Global 7500 is a topic for fans. Considering that the planes are going practically nose to nose, the choice is more a matter of taste. And the race continues. Trying to overtake the G700 again, Bombaji is developing the Global 8000 project and Gulfstream, making its longest-range business jet, is developing the G800 project, with a range of as much as 8,000 miles. A little more, and the range will be limited only by the dimensions of planet Earth. And soon, a Frenchman will drop in on the party. The Falcon 10X is just around the corner and has every chance of pushing aside its colleagues in the market. They will have to catch up and overtake again. Well, if the arms race is manifested in flight performance, engineering solutions and interior design, I am all for it. Like and subscribe to the channel so as not to miss new videos, luxurious flights and soft landings to you.